What is up, guys? Welcome back to Late Night Frights. I'm Chris Brought, the co-leader, and this week, uh, we have, I want to say, a new theme. Uh, if it's not new for, uh, for the J. Sloan, it's definitely new for, uh, me and all the other members, and that is our top ten horror sequels. Now, I want to say that we have done this before. I wasn't on the channel, so I should say that Late Night Frights has done this before, but, you know, most of the members that were here, uh, if we did do it, uh, are gone. A lot of them have quit or got kicked out, uh, or, you know, however it happened. Uh, so their videos aren't on this channel. So if, you know, if any videos are on this channel, it's probably Jordan's. And, uh, if that's the case, it's new for me and all the other members. But if we haven't done this before, it's a new theme. <laughs> so, um, yeah, before I get into this, I just want to say that, uh, these films are just, uh, my top 10 sequels, the ones that I like and I recommend, you know, there's some of them that are not as good as others because I'm limited to my collection. I don't want to say, oh, this film, but I don't have it. I'm strictly basing it off the ones I have in my collection right now. So there's going to be some that, you know, are obviously really good films that are not on this list. And uh, that's because I don't have them. Uh, now, there's going to be some that you don't agree with, and if you do, I respect that. You know, just please respect my opinion. These are films that I enjoy and that, you know, if you don't enjoy them, that's fine. You know, a lot of people have different opinions, and that's what I love about YouTube. That's what I love about hearing, you know, people's movie reviews is that we all have different views on movies, and uh, just don't get bent out of shape over it. You know, if you uh, don't agree with me, you know, that's cool. I respect that. Leave a comment down below. Tell me your top ten sequels, and uh, yeah. So, uh, gonna go and dive into it, guys. Number 10 is a 1995 film starring Donald Pleasance and Paul Rudd, and that is Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Now, I'm strictly basing this off of, uh, mostly the producer's cut, because I like the producer's cut, uh, but I do like the theatrical cut, too, so, um, I, I, I probably put both of them up there. I know, you know, it's technically two films, but... If I had to pick one, I'd probably predict, uh, wow, pick the producer's cut. Got tongue tied there, guys. Um, I, I just enjoy it. I think that, uh, it has a really good atmosphere, really good kills. I love the way Michael Myers looks in this film. I think the mask is definitely better than the one in part five. I just like the blue tint to the film. Uh, I think it's very cool, very, uh, I don't know, just very, I don't want to say gothic, but very just dark. It has a really good atmosphere to it, especially the producer's cut with all the just the, the cult people there. That just gives a really good vibe. And I think the soundtrack is awesome. Now, uh, don't get me wrong. I think that it is very odd. Spoiler alert, guys. If you haven't seen the producer's cut, please, you know, or the theatrical cut, you know, skip this part. I think that it's very odd that Michael raped his niece that's something i can't that's just weird but i do like how they show that um that she got abducted and you know put into the van and that's how we you know ended here i think that's cool um i just like it it's a guilty pleasure uh i just like the atmosphere the acting i thought the uh the mask looked really good i thought uh i think it was uh george wilbur who played uh michael in this one for the most part i just like the way that michael was portrayed and I uh, thought the kills were great. Uh, it's not a perfect film, but I, I just personally enjoy it. And that is number 10, Halloween 6, the producer's cut, or the theatrical cut. You know, I like both of them. Number 9 is another Halloween sequel, made in 1998, starring Jamie Lee Curtis, uh, Josh Hartnett, and uh, the rapper, I think LL Cool J. And that is Halloween H2O. Now this one, I like this one, it gets a lot of hate, and uh, you know... It's not a perfect film. I don't know if there really is a perfect film, but one my main flaw that a lot of people a lot of people think is a flaw to them, which you know, if you think it's a flaw, you know, more power to you, is they say that it feels too much like Scream that it has this nineties atmosphere to it. Well, um, I'm not trying to be rude in any any way, but it just in my opinion, it's supposed to feel that way, man. It. The original film was made in 1978. 20 years later, it's in the 90s. Of course it's supposed to have a 90s vibe. Uh, you know, I just don't understand that complaint. Uh, one problem I do have is uh, 
Mako's mask changes constantly. Um, I don't know why he had the uh, the mask from Part Six in the beginning when uh, I think it was with uh, Joseph Gordon Levitt, and you know I think I don't, I don't know the other actor's name, but it's at the beginning of the film. He had the H six mask on, which uh, you know they had that on. Why not just keep it? And then they have a decent mask in this one, but then they change it to CGI, and he looks like a white Frankenstein. I'm just like, what? That's one problem. But I like how they brought Lori back. I like to see, you know, how she's dealt with the events of, you know, the what happened in the original film, how she's dealt with it, how she still struggles uh, with the past, having nightmares of Michael Myers. And I just love when they meet face-to-face, -face, when they have that final fight. Uh, the last 15 minutes is is great to me uh the prey becomes uh the predator or the hunted becomes the hunter i love that and uh, i love the ending i thought the ending was awesome it gives me chills uh if i recommend you watch the ending i have a stereo system here and i have it plugged up to my tv it, it is just awesome the soundtrack and the, the sounds on this blu-ray it's awesome Definitely, uh, definitely enjoy the ending. It should have ended the franchise, in my opinion. I don't hate Resurrection, but I just thought that this was a really good ending. It should have ended it. In my opinion, that's number nine, Halloween H2O. The next one is from another franchise that I love. And, uh, it is a 1980, I, I think it's 88 film. Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, The Dream Master. Uh, this is one that I grew up with. Um, I grew up with most of these, but this is one I grew up uh, renting at my movie store. I rented Part 3 and Part 4, just like with Halloween 4. I rented that with Halloween 5. Uh, I just love the characters in this one. Uh, you get some of the you know characters from Dream Warriors back into this one, but then you get introduced to Alice, played by Lisa Wilcox. I love Alice. I think she's, um, I wouldn't say my favorite, but she uh, she's definitely my favorite behind Nancy. Um, and I just like the kills in this film. I thought the, uh, the practical effects were really good. The dream sequences were really good. Uh, one scene that disturbs me in particular, while I don't like a sausage pizza anymore, is, uh, when Freddy takes the glove, dips it right into the sausage, and it's one of, uh, I don't want to spoil it who it is, but it's one of the characters from the film who died. Uh, he's a sausage, and <laughs> he's screaming, and Freddy just... Chews them up and says, <clears throat> soul pizza. That's disturbing to me. I don't know why that just really got to me. Uh, I just think of Freddy every time I look at a pizza, and it don't help that I work at a pizza place. <laughs> no, it's totally random, but that I don't know why, of all things, that disturbed me. But Robert England obviously does a phenomenal job as Freddy Krueger. Uh, he really, to me, uh, really is the highlight of uh, the franchise. And... Most of the movies, but uh, in this, you know, in this case, you have actually good characters, uh, good actors, you know, like uh, Alice, uh, you have Dan, you have Sheila, you have Debbie, I'm trying to think of all the characters, uh, Kincaid, Joey, Kristen, just love the film, I think it has uh, very good kills, very good uh, acting, and a really good soundtrack, I love the soundtrack and the, you know, the very good 80s vibe in this film, so that is number eight, and that is... Nightmare on Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. Number 7 is a 1988 film, Halloween 4, The Return of Michael Myers. I love this film. Definitely brings back nostalgia for me because uh, Jamie, I love Jamie. Daniel Harris did a, well, I said that weird. Danielle Harris did a really good job. Uh, you have Ellie Cornell playing Rachel. You have uh, Dr. Loomis. Love Dr. Loomis, Donald Pleasance. Rest in peace, man. You definitely... In my opinion, he held the franchise together. I love Michael Myers. I love Jamie. I love Laurie. But Donald Pleasance is the man. I love Dr. Loomis. Definitely one of my favorite characters other than Michael in the franchise. Uh, just really, really fun kills in this one. I thought the acting was pretty good. Soundtrack's good. And uh, I just like the whole vibe. I think the, the film just has a really good pace. It don't drag. It's just fun from beginning to end, in my opinion. So I love Halloween 4. Uh, especially since I was little, I watched Halloween 3. I was very disappointed, and I watched this, and I loved it. thought it was a really good, uh, really good return to the franchise. Uh, number 6 is a 1986 film, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2, or TCM2. Uh, now, this one gets a lot of hate, and, uh, you know, I can understand in a way, 
um, because the original is so serious, so gritty, so raw, and just so brutal. And this one's completely different. It has humor, um, and I understand why Toby Hooper did that, because he knew he couldn't top the original film, and, uh, so he went out and had fun, and it's pretty much like a self-mockery, like a parody of itself, and, uh, I like it. I think it's cool. I think it's fun. I think, uh, the effects are really good by Tom Savini. Um, Chop Top. <clears throat> I love Chop Top, man. Chop Top, uh, played by Bill Mosley, is great. Uh, <laughs> he's just like, you lick my plate! Hey, it's just great. It's just so over the top and weird. Uh, but I love it. I think the soundtrack's really cool. Uh, the effects by Tom Savini are really great. I love the gore in this film. Uh, definitely check out the uh, uh, this particular Blu-ray, the Arrow you know, Video Limited Edition, if it's still available. It comes with a lot of stuff. I think a 100-page booklet. even comes with two other Toby Hooper films. So, uh, definitely check it out, guys. Uh, also, I love Leatherface in this film. He cracks me up when he has a chainsaw all over his head doing that. Uh, so, that's number six, TCM2. Uh, number five. Now, this right here used to be my favorite horror sequel. I still enjoy it. I really, really like this film. But I never really considered uh, the films after this to be, like, I know they're sequels, but I kind of just looked at them as standalone films. But if we're putting, you know, any sequel in, uh, you know, in question, uh, unfortunately, this one drops down to my top, you know, number five. 